You are watching Life on Gabriela TV, community television for you, by you. My name is Marshall Fries with Gabriella TV, and today I am talking to Shirley Nicholson. I'm the team leader for Emergency Support Services, Gabriella. Uh, it's nice to meet you, Shirley, and thank you for your talk today. Can you You're tell welcome. us a little bit more about your background? Well, I'm a biologist and uh, an arborist, uh, aquatic ecologist, but um, all my life I've always been really concerned about emergency preparedness. and. Um, in my previous employee, I didn't really have an opportunity to do anything about it, but then when I came here, there was a, a real need to look at being self-sufficient, and I really like that. And I like being prepared. I've had a few disappointments, and so I think encouraging people to be independently functional and safe in a place like this where we're living in a small pocket of the earth where uh, we're really limited on what we can do, and we're limited on how we can get away from here and that sort of thing. Um, what, what advice would you give to people who are coming to the island for the first time, they've never been here, what, what, what would you want them to know? Well, I, f I think the first thing I always, they, everyone thinks this is funny, but I say, well, first thing you need to do is to recognize that around about December 15, 16 or 17, the power is going to be off for two or three days. And if you don't have a generator, you won't have any water and perhaps no heat. So maybe you need to look at being prepared to uh, live in your house for a couple of days with those little resources missing. And it's not always something that you're taught when you're buying your house here. And it's winter, of course, so we usually get snow in December. And the road plowing is not uh, uh, the same as if you live in the city. The roads are open depending on the, the need and the resources that they need to serve. So you may be, if you're on a back, you know, a side road or whatever, maybe your road won't be plowed. I was going to ask, what are some common things that you feel like people who, who live here might not know, even though they live here, even though they are aware of the risk? What are some common issues that people might not be aware of? I think they... they don't know the limited resources that we can have on the island when it comes to fuel and food and uh, supports um, to keep us at home comfortably and that's why I say people really need to prepare for protecting themselves and shelter in place and be safe and as comfortable as possible and there's no reason for people being uncomfortable or suffering or not not having the resources they need if they work together and teamwork is everything here. Teamwork in these neighborhoods will make it easy for these people to be, to be uh, healthy and to be happy and enjoy the time that they do have together and make the best of it. You know, whereas if you live in the city, perhaps you think somebody's going to look after you and you don't have any resources. Or if you lived in an apartment building or whatever, um, and just imagine how it was when the people were confined to home because of COVID. We didn't change our lifestyle. We went outside and worked with the animals and played in the garden and did all the things we normally did. So it didn't really have much of an impact on us as it did in the city. Hmm. Um, what you, you mentioned, you spoke about the power of community organization, being organized as a neighborhood. What else can the fire department here, the authorities do to help either spread the message or be proactive about this situation, the fire situation? Well, I think that um, it's up to people to learn how to be independent and to learn how to take care of themselves. And the fire department is not a babysitting service. Um, they provide open houses to educate people on everything from using fire extinguishers to, to teaching kids how to handle hoses during fires and educating them about the importance of firemen and policemen and all these resources in our neighborhood. And I think it's up to us to help the fire department and the police department and all the other people work as efficiently as they can and provide the best service they can and when we're educated about how to help them evacuate us or help them um, notify us and all those kinds of things then uh, we're we're really benefiting ourselves it's a kind of a selfish move but sure helps the fire department and in turn they can help us more than ever it's like leaving the gate open if there's a fire if you want to leave home and close the gate and they're in your neighborhood and they're fighting fire in your neighborhood and they can't get into your yard, I guess they won't come in and put any water on your house. So help them as much as you can. Now you mentioned you were going to be doing more of these talks. This is something you do regularly? Regularly. Um, can you tell us a little bit about upcoming talks you're going to be giving and where you're going to be giving those and kind of the 
have people have, have people or uh, requested that you come speak or it's up to the individual to request a presentation a neighborhood emergency preparedness presentation and um, they usually contact me and say well what do I do and then I give them a, a, a series of suggestions on what to do and so there's all kinds of things people are doing some are more creative than the others some um, I can think of one neighborhood where they all got together for a potluck and then they had a, a little competition to see who could produce the most interesting disaster cake so there was earthquake cake and there was, you know, rapid defiring. It was all kinds of things like that or else it's a potluck or sometimes it's a brunch. And it's often like today, it's the first time these people have gotten together. And I remember the last place I made a presentation, this lady who was new to the neighborhood came up and said to this lady right in front of me, now I'll know you're my neighbor when I see you in the grocery store. She didn't know that before, and they live right beside each other. So it's a good opportunity for people to meet and, and say, during a disaster, you know who your neighbor is. Mm -hmm. And if you know who he is, you'll probably spend a lot of time sitting at a table chatting about things to do in the, when there's a lot of downtime. Uh, what can people do to get more involved? Um, like, I've, I've lived here for just over six months. If I wanted to be more involved in this initiative, what could I do? Well, you could organize the people that live around you. Um, you could call them and say, are you interested in getting together at my house on, on a date that works and, um, and invite them to come over for a potluck and meet them and that sort of thing. And then you could call me and I would call the, I would say, okay, here's, here's a date for you to pick for a presentation. And then I would say, do you want me to bring the Fire Smart coordinator over to talk about Fire Smart and talk about how to make your house safer if there is a fire? And uh, we just go from there and I say I'll come if it's 50 houses or six houses I don't care as long as you are interested in participating genuinely in the affair it's not information for sharing with everybody all around everywhere and I'm not going to tell you the places I'm presenting because I have so many mm -hmm. um, I have so many right now I'm really busy but nevertheless uh, I can tell you that in the last in the last few weeks I've presented to well over 100 houses and by the time I'm finished at the 1st of October, it'll be over 400. And so neighborhoods are really interested. And in, since I started doing this on Gabriel, I think that I'm now, I'm, I'm sure I'm well over a thousand houses that, I, that have uh, gotten involved in emergency support services, secretly, quietly, looking after themselves and changing up with the times. And some are having refreshers, like some people here today, and some are brand new to the neighborhood. But we're always open to getting more houses involved because I think uh, we'll be sheltering in place and if we're sheltering in place let's be as comfortable as we can be. Uh, you mentioned seeing a barn burn down when you were a kid. Yes. What that or what other experiences have, have motivated you or make you so passionate about uh, going around and doing what you do? Well I think um, I've seen lots of things that have happened from an minor accidents and you know a fire in my lifetime and a few other things and um, I guess I've witnessed things where people could have stepped up and helped and they were instead of stepping up and putting a hand out to help somebody they just froze because they just froze and it's it's, it's not that uh, I don't tend to freeze when I see something that happens I tend to step in and but I've seen people freeze and it didn't matter how bad the injury was or not they just freeze because they don't know what to do and they never thought about it before and so um, just seeing a car accident and handing somebody a, a blanket to put over them is nothing you, there's nothing to doing that but you can be prepared by having it with you do you, do you feel like meetings like this one are gonna help people kind of just have a pr be prepared for when something does happen I know it I do know it because the people are talking now about, well, I wonder what we what should we inventory here? Do we, do we have, look at somebody already came up with a list of a presentation I did um, 15 years ago and said, look, we've got some of this work done already, let's add to it. Another lady in this group walked up today and said, I've got an AED, I think we should put it in the main meeting place for the group so they can all share it. I'm never home, I'm hardly ever home, and I why not put it in a common place that everybody knows about? So all of a sudden, a first aid kit and, 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 and that in one spot. Some houses have a backboard, they have people trained on how to carry somebody on a stretcher, people with air horns to call each other, people with radios to talk from one neighborhood to the other. 
people searching out pathways to get out of here, trails, and using the, the resources on Gabriola, like the, the Gulf Islands um, lands and trails, maps that are so good at describing ways to get out of here when trails are right on our doorstep and sometimes we don't even know about. So it's a good opportunity to get to know the resources in your own neighborhood too. Uh, do you have any last thing you'd like to say? Well, I'd say if you haven't done so already, get serious about sheltering in place. Um, it's really important. Um, no one's going to come and babysit you through a disaster, and the disaster could take many forms, and whether it's a winter storm, or it's an earthquake, or it's a hurricane like we've had before, it could be anything. So I think um, you have a responsibility to, to take on the, the challenge of being as comfortable as you can be and uh, help your neighbour who can't help themselves as much as possible. Okay, well thank you Shirley. You're welcome.